The project Teachers Advancing Common Core Learning, or as we fondly call it, the Tackle Project, really helped teachers see that the most successful lessons that are the most valuable to students in a real world experience is not when we're teaching our content separately. It's when we're really helping infuse all of the different content areas into our classrooms. Normally when I collaborate with other teachers, it's usually just teachers of my same content area. And sometimes we get very caught up in school initiatives and we don't really get to dive deeply into new ways to teach that's best for students. And so this collaboration really helped remind me that at the root of it all needs to be what's best for students and how to be innovative and how to use things that are real life and real world for them. And so I really enjoyed the chances that I got to sit down with these other teachers, the math and the English teacher, to just dive deeply into a text ourselves. And first we really examined the text pretty closely. And then we talked about, well, what does it look like in your content area? And what will your lens look like? And what are the additional supplemental things that we can bring in? And because each of us has a different content base, we were bringing in lots of different supports for the students that made it much richer than if I had tried to do it on my own. So the standard that ISKME chose uh, to base our lessons in was one of the literacy standards that really looks at grounding work as evidence in text. So having students really learn the content from a text. That was really important to me because I want my students to be successful scientists who can read and understand and use complex texts at any level where they choose to work. And I haven't really been doing that as a good job in class. So this was a great impetus to really encourage me to design lessons that I didn't expect to. So I chose a genetics unit that I normally teach very PowerPoint driven and lecture driven and they discovered a lot of the information by reading the text on their own and it was a huge aha for me. It was an English teacher who found the text that uh, we decided to use, which had to do with whether or not um, someone's life choices impact their future. And so this text was really tracking um, people from juvenile and adolescent all the way through adulthood, adulthood and looking at whether or not the things that they chose to do changed their future. And we were able to look at it from a biology point of view in terms of neurotransmitters and the production of proteins, and it directly correlated to the content that I needed to teach. But it was great because the math teacher, the English teacher, each of them took a very different way of looking at the same text. Normally when I teach genetics, it's very structured and let me tell you exactly what you need to know and exactly how to solve the problem and you solve it exactly the way that I taught you. And one of the things I liked about this lesson is that the math standard actually looks at problem solving. And so I was hitting the literacy standard, I was hitting the math standard, looking at multiple ways to solve a problem and really letting them discover it first rather than me just telling them, this is how you solve a genetics problem. And so not only were they working with a high level text, but they were doing things on their own and discovering the information on their own, which means that when they look at pieces of information, texts in the future, I feel a lot more confident that they'll feel enabled and feel supported that they could do that even if I wasn't there. Because throughout the year I had been using literacy and they had been a little bit used to reading and grounding in a text, they were a little familiar with the process, but they still felt very like, I want you to just tell me how to do it. I, I, want, I want to know that I'm doing it right and I want you to just tell me how to do it. And so it was a very important moment for me to say, I want you to try, and even if it's not right, like we're gonna learn from the process of what did you find in the text and how did you try to make it work. Um, and so at the end, a lot of them were like, well, this isn't how I normally learned, but I still got there and I feel pretty good about the things that I discovered because they were pulling things out from the text that weren't intended meanings for me that were really valuable to them 
And so it really reminded me that no matter what text you're teaching, students are going to interpret it differently, and it's really important to give them that chance to do that. And I also really enjoyed the fact that students had looked at the same text from a different lens, and so they would come into my class after having done it in English class maybe two days before, and say like, oh hey, we also looked at this part of the text, or when we looked at it, we looked at it that way, and I think it creates a much more um, inquisitive student who's able to look at a text from different viewpoints points and that reminds me that when I'm doing a text there's a lot of value in letting teachers around my building know like hey this is the text I'm using in my classroom would anybody else like to use it or do you want to reference it or mention it or can you advise me on it and it just reminds me that um, a, a true teacher is always learning and I need to seek out those opportunities to learn from other teachers in my building. One of the big things for us in this project is that they created a template that made it really easy for us to think critically about the lesson we were writing. Right now we expect teachers, in some cases, to reinvent the wheel every day and remake everything all on their own. Or we have the other end of the spectrum where we're expecting teachers to just use a specific curriculum and not stray from it an inch. And that's not successful. Neither of those ends are. And OER Commons really overcomes that by saying, here's some base resources that you can use that are created by teachers who did these lessons, who have work samples, who can show you what it looks like in their classroom, and then you can contact them if you want more information. So it really changed the way that I seek out lessons and that I share mine. Previously with state standards, you could really only collaborate with people who are in your state because although we might be teaching a basic content area across the nation, the standard wasn't the same and what it looked like in a classroom wasn't the same. And now that we have the Common Core State Standards, there's a lot deeper understanding of a, what you're trying to teach, and B, best practices for how to teach it. For me as a biology teacher, literacy was sometimes mentioned, but never really focused on or encouraged. And so the Common Core State Standards really support me in seeking out ways to communicate with other biology teachers to use these best practices on how to use literacy. And that was not possible before the Common Core.